Don't. This is Hear Nothing, See Nothing, Say Nothing, episode 20-something. Welcome yep. back. It's Bill, it's Phil, and our new friend Alex. Alex, welcome to the show. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. The uh, first question I'd like to ask any new attendee is this. Have you ever listened to our podcast before? I actually haven't. Okay. that's <laughs> No, that's what everyone says. That's fine. Uh, Phil, how would you describe our show? Uh, it's sort of like a... Have you have you ever heard of uh, Joel Olstein? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. It's sort of like a mix between that and mm-hmm. Alex Jones. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And uh, what else? What else? I, Barbara Walters. Yeah, Barbara. It's it's really just a hodgepodge of uh, intellectual thought. It's yeah. Um, we discuss hot button issues. We discuss. We get people mad. Right. We, we get people mad. I always try to get people to sing, so watch out for that. All right. And I think it's I think it's going to be a good one. Two out of three, or two out of three, good comments is that they love us. They think this is the greatest thing ever. And one out of three things were horribly pathetic. But that was deleted because they're too pathetic to keep it on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah, we're we're. We're proud to be pathetic here. Is that, is that a good description? Yeah. I, sounds that's, good. Yeah, yeah we'll that's find out. Guys. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, you're new to the show, mm-hmm. and whenever we have a guest, we like to put them in the hot seat a little bit, do a little getting to know you, team sure. building fun. Are you comfortable with that? Of course, yeah. Ask away. All right. So the first thing we like to know in a friend is, what is your social security number? <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah, we're waiting. <laughs> Everybody has an answer. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, Phil, are you eight, writing that? Phil, are you oh, good, good. <laughs> he fell for it. Uh, <laughs> so your name is Alex. Yeah. But you Alex go Kerner, by yep. Alex Kerner, yep. but you have another name. Yeah, Psychedelics. And that's where, my, does, where does this come from? That's my DJ name. Oh, did you need me to put the mic up further? Oh, no, this is good. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's, right. um, you can sound it. I feel like it's not doing anything, though. Oh yeah, it's just going through the. Oh okay. The stu- I got a portable studio here. Gotcha. <laughs> it's it's magic. I, I, this is my first ever podcast. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Welcome. Ours too. So <laughs> you're in good company. <laughs> so you're a DJ, psychedelics. Yeah. Uh, what was the inspiration for the name? What sort of DJing do you do? What's your story? Well, my uh, I always was a crazy record collector. Like for the last like twelve years, I've been. Doing the psychedelic collecting, okay. Doing going really deep in like private press and records like that that nobody's ever heard of usually. Sure. When did you, you uh, start your collection? Let the man talk. <laughs> sorry. 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 Yeah, it started. Uh, yeah, it started uh, with my buddy Mo. I met him and him and his friend Jimmy. We just all got together and he, I saw their record collections. I was like, man, this is really cool. And I already was into the music, but I didn't have records so much. I would buy records if they wasn't available on CD. But then once I finally was like, oh, yeah, these records, the, the sound quality and everything is so much better, I got hooked on the record collecting, and that was it with that. And then um, after a few years of collecting, then me and Mo started DJing together, and that blew up. And my buddy Martin from California, um, I started out just being psychedelic, Alex, and my friend Martin would, well, put it together, just be be a play on words, psychedelics, psychedelics. I like it. And that was it. Mm-hmm. The rest was history. And uh, gotten to DJ in England, Baltimore, Atlanta, I've gone to all different places and all over the city. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. That's Vic- awesome. Yep. Uh, where's the favorite place you've been? To DJ? Um, DJing the Liverpool Psych Festival was probably the craziest thing I've ever Yeah, that that's was, crazy. Yeah, that was like thousands Psych of Fest people. for London? Yeah, yeah, it was in Liverpool. Uh, Liverpool. Was inc- it was insane. Yeah, there was thousands of people there. It was, just, yeah, that was life-changing for sure. But yeah, just in the city, I've, I've always had fun DJing for... Yo, Crow Clex days doing yeah, shows yeah. like that. Yeah. That was always fun. So, um, yeah, anytime, you know, I just I do gigs at Reed's Local now and stuff. Every ne- couple months I'll do something over there. And, yeah, it's just always fun to That's play, awesome. play my music. I love turning people on to the music because I feel like it's stuff that people feel like. If they hear it, they just don't. It's just it's They don't have that very, exposure. Yeah, yeah. So I just love playing it out. And, you know, if you... People get into it, yeah. <laughs> so always down to turn them on. Yeah. So you mentioned psychedelic music, and <coughs> what? Well, I, w- I wanted to ask, uh, who was uh, who was on the lineup for at London? Uh, 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 Yako you- Gardner was on there. The Resonaires. Uh, I did it for the. You ever heard of Trouble in Mind Records? The label. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I DJed for their. They had like a whole booth or like a whole stage. Okay. At the festival. So they asked me to DJ for their other label bands that were at the time. They all played for the for the festival. Yeah. 
So that was that was incredible. Yeah. Did, did you meet anybody like uh, you look up to, or as far as like you know, backstage? They, they didn't have like any, like there was all like new bands. That was the only thing about that fest. Like all like I played all old music, but all the bands that were playing were like you no know, current day bands from like Europe and other places. Yeah. So I didn't really know that, but I heard a lot of cool bands at that time that I hmm. never thought I <laughs> never would have probably heard otherwise from that. Yeah. But yeah, Yako Gardner was my favorite. I don't know if you ever. I'm sure it was uh, yeah. jolly good fun. It was fun. Sh- shopping oh, yeah. at all the record stores and record London, stores, right? the vintage shops there. Yeah, it was a whole different thing. I will say I missed Chicago, but I was there for five days. By the fifth day, I was ready to go. Sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's probably true with like Baltimore, like any other city. Yeah. Like, oh, Baltimore. Yeah, especially I was done with that in Atlanta. Yeah. So, but going to California, I went to California last last week. That was fun. Nice. Yeah, it's a DJ, but just to see. That was the only place I ever didn't get homesick at because it was so nice. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> so you specialize in psychedelic music. Yeah, that's my. that's been my thing. I used to, I got into like British invasion music, like in, like, right before I started high school, there was a. Uh, oh, I don't, I don't show. mean to be a stickler, but yeah, you got to keep the mic. Oh, right I'm sorry. Right, right real close. You, yeah, yeah, you can yeah. pull it back. To, like, oh, okay. Seat, yeah, so. yeah. Thanks, man. Um, but yeah, we was always. Uh, I got into British invasion music. I always was into sixties music and stuff as a kid. The, like the first CD, yeah, I got into that like in high school and stuff. And first CD I ever owned was Mamas and Papas' first album. That is was that, the first CD I ever. Is that psychedelic? Was, is that it's like kind of like folk poppy, kind of like early psychedelic vibes. Okay. But yeah, but you know, like anything like the sixties kind of hits, like the old oldie station kind of stuff. That's sure. what I listened to as a kid. And I just kind of always was into that, and I just kept finding genres and subgenres within that, and yeah, that's kind of where I was when I found the psych music around my high school. You could just Nuggets compilation, slap her off the table, <laughs> <laughs> really like. <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, quick shout out to our special fourth yeah, guest. We, yeah, we got extra uh, cats here. Yeah, <laughs> Betty the cat. Betty's really trying to mooch the weed, the popcorn, and your beer. She so. <laughs> she is a huge fan of psychedelic music, so I'm sure she's just <laughs> super. No, she dude, engrossed. she loves. Popcorn and cheese, so yeah. she's having like a. Dude, that's what the psychedelic movement is all about, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's, um, yeah, but it was a uh, yeah. So after the British invasion stuff, I kind of found the psych music in high school, the Nuggets compilations and the Rubble compilations, and that was an endless rabbit hole. And I'm still discovering stuff today. And sure, was, <laughs> yeah, very cool. And Phil asked about the lineup of like the Liverpool Fest, and I asked about psychedelic music because I don't know who well, Yako. Uh, Yako Gardner. Yeah. Yako Gardner. Uh-huh. Uh, so are there like big names in psychedelic that uh, perhaps like simpletons like myself would know of? Like, oh, like, yeah, like, like for like older bands, you know, like the Beatles had a, like the Sergeant Pepper would be. Sure. Their psych phase, and then like the Beach Boys Pet Sounds record would be. Okay. Kind of considered like early psychedelic and then. You know, like Satanic the, Majesties. Yeah, exactly. Rolling. The Who, the Quick Ones, the psych record, the Kings Village Green Preservation Society. Those are all. Okay. Would be considered like. The first stepping stones of that, yeah, and then you can just keep going deeper into world psych, like bands from Japan, Turkey, all kinds of places. It's it's insane how much there was. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and yeah. is is there still new psychedelic music coming out? Is it still an active? Yeah, yeah. There's new bands coming out. I feel like it's bigger now than it was when it was originally coming out. Like it was a super underground kind of thing. Like in the '60s, like a lot of the bands that I listened to didn't make it at the time. You know, they released like maybe one album or one forty-five even, and called it a day at that. <laughs> Is uh, Count Five considered? Yeah, that's like g- garage rock, early psychedelic. Yeah, yeah. That, that like predated like even like the Beatles doing psychedelic. But Psychotic Reaction. That was one of the first songs to use like word like psych anything in the title. Yeah. yeah. Uh huh. Like thirteen floor elevators. That's that's a big psych band. For I, sure. I was uh, I always was like fascinated by how did people differentiate like, you know when when there was um, I'm trying to think like old folky, you know sit on your porch rock, mm. in you know the south, and then it somehow moved into rock and roll because it got a little faster and Elvis moved a little bit more offensive with those legs. And then I, I, I wonder what was like the, um, you know, the, the, the borderline to where people were like, this is, no, 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 this isn't rock and roll. This is psychedelic. I wonder what like. Uh, yeah. You know, that's such a slippery slope going down the, uh, the thing of saying like, oh, what's psych, what's garage rock, you know, that yeah. sub genres. Like I just kind of like when somebody just kind of says like what kind of music I like, I usually just like to say like 60s, 70s. 
Like somebody who has like never even heard of psychedelic music before, I try to say that just because once mm-hmm. they go into that, then like I said, you start having to pick and choose what psych and all this other stuff. And yeah, you know, I just always was like, yeah, just it's good music. Anything from like sixty-five to seventy-five, that's my area of expertise. But and sixty-four can sucked. But yeah. <laughs> you know what? There's there's some great stuff from sixty-four too, and then late six, uh, <laughs> like early sixties, late seventies, there's some stuff too, but. The mass of my collection is from that 10-year period. Yeah. Mm. Mm. <laughs> uh, how much of your collection is dedicated to the Grateful Dead? I've got, uh, I've got Anthem of the Sun and their self-titled first album. Okay. That's, no yeah. American Beauty? I don't have American Beauty on vinyl. Okay. Yeah, I'm slipping on that. <laughs> yeah. No, that's fine. So what are your thoughts on the dead? Because you say psychedelic, and that's where my mind Go goes ahead. immediately. Yeah. You know, that was a band that for a long time, like, because when I got into psychedelic music, I was into, like, the really, like, poppy kind of, like, whimsical kind of side of, like, the UK kind of, trying to think of, like, a good example, like the Hollies kind of, okay. the Carrie Ann and stuff, songs like that that were, like, more, like, upbeat and stuff. So, like, the Dead for a time, like, I wasn't into, like, instrumental and long jams mm-hmm. for stuff for, uh, at first, so it took me a little while to get into the Dead, but then when I did, like I said, Anthem of the Sun, I think is my favorite dead album. Nobody likes Long Jams, Bill. I'm sorry. That, that is absolutely <laughs> not true. Uh, and you'll find out this somewhere at Wrigley Field when Dead and Company oh, take the field. <laughs> Asshole. <laughs> no, just, I have found in my experience that not that many people have, like, that heightened level of, like, music appreciation. <coughs> that yeah, There's a lot of subtle, sophisticated nuances uh, that a lot of people just lack in, in this day and age, so... That, that's so, me insulting uh, you. <laughs> why? <laughs> why? Suggesting that you... Uh, never mind. Don't mm-hmm. worry about it. Uh, so well, well, well uh, every, uh, I mean, my, my, my collection is everything <laughs> but the dead. So that's a whole lot of nuance. No. <laughs> no, no, I'm s- All right, let's get All right, this it. is where shit gets real. Yeah, okay. right. Yeah, Alex, <laughs> yeah. Phil and I just need some one-on-one time right now. Oh, it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, mommy Not and daddy this are fighting again. <laughs> Not this episode. Right. So, no, it's fine. Like, some people yeah. like the Grateful Dead and other no, people No, like honestly, I'll, I'll, I will taste. be completely honest. Like, it, it's sort of like we spoke before. Like, sometimes the fans ruins the music. And I honestly have been, like, from what I've heard from the Dead, I didn't mind it. From what I've heard by, say, Fish, I think is horrible. Sure. Mm-hmm. But 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 the dead I didn't like I never my, like I listened to the dead when I was a kid and I was just like, you know, this is cool, but especially when you, m- most kids listen to a crap lo- a load of like poppy stuff. Mm-hmm. Whatever's on what whatever catches can catch a tune quick. So, I don't know, instead of that I'd li- I, I don't know as far as I pro- I probably listen to the Beatles instead of the dead. Sure, and you but, hate the Beatles. Yeah, so yeah. That, that puts <laughs> the Grateful Dead. Yeah, yeah. That's fine. That's fine. We can still be friends. Different strokes for different. Oh, I'm folks. just, sa- I'm just yeah. saying. I'm not. I'm, I, oh, you bastard! The cat almost hit stop on the record <laughs> thing. <laughs> <laughs> the popcorn addiction is oh getting. Oh my god, yeah. he's on YouTube side. They're trying to shut us you know, down. You know, you know what? You guys keep talking. I'm, j- I'm going to kick him out. Cause <laughs> Seriously. All right, that's fine. Um, Phil will be right back with us. He's going to go yeah. put uh, his cat down. Um, I'll lure it in when it comes back again. So I don't know where it went. <laughs> All right, this is a fun little added uh, layer well, to today's well, show. Well, no, I told you what happened with that other fostered cat, right? You know how it just drowned. Kept no. So oh, uh, so Alex, you've seen our gray and black cat. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the tuxedo cat, the one that loves popcorn. Our gray and black cat are ours, and um. I felt like, oh, uh, you know, I, I love Kelly. There's, you know, I got this whole man cave here. I mean, she didn't really care about having, like, anything in the basement, but I was like, I should let her do, like, obviously have a say in the house, and she really wanted to foster cats. Yeah. So when she said, let's foster cats, I thought that, me- she's like, you know, explained it, oh, they'll pay for the food, and they'll, you know, they'll, they'll take care of everything. You just have to take care of them. And I come home and there's fucking six cats in the house. <laughs> I'm not even kidding because they 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 had two brothers, mm-hmm. and one of them, no no, they had three other siblings, and one of them was a really really furry black cat, mm-hmm. which was the coolest cat. But it ate something at I think it kept eating at our. I have like those old school on uh, the handles in the street popcorn machine. Oh yeah, yeah. And it would open the thing and eat them. And it would have 
diarrhea all over the house. Oh <laughs> so, yeah. but this one doesn't. Just yeah. letting you know. Right. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. good. <laughs> but, but yeah. So these guys here are fosters. Only, only that tuxedo one, mm-hmm. and the other two we love. The other two we love. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The foster one we single out and ridicule and <laughs> the popcorn the, stealer. Uh, yeah, abuse <laughs> uh, verbally. <laughs> what were you gonna say? Oh no, I was gonna say, can you hear her growling now? Because you could, you could almost oh, hear. No. She's just pierogi's going for the attack. Perfect way to go, pierogi. No, but <coughs> go get them, boy. Um. So yeah, we're um, you're saying uh. So you mentioned that you listened to some Grateful Dead growing up. Yeah, yeah. What were your favorite bands as a child? And Alex, get ready because this question is coming your way. Coming my way. I gotta think yeah. about it. Phil, mm-hmm. what? Me? Yeah. As a child, yeah, well, the like first the first album I ever owned was on tape, and that was Guns N' Roses' Use Your Illusion 1. Nice. Which I still love to this day. Is that, was Civil War on that? No, no, that's two. <laughs> one was the one that I played for you in the car. You're like, I didn't know this. there's so many bluesy piano shit on here. That sounds like me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and yeah, it was a lot of the stuff that most of the stuff they play on the radio I don't like. And here's Betty, so pause real quick while I kick her out. All right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Still, wow, he is flying up those stairs. See you, Betty. Mm-hmm. Uh, All right, a round of applause for Betty, our special guest on today's program. All right. Hey. First person to get kicked out, too, right? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Security. <laughs> so, <laughs> All right, so Guns N' Roses. So Guns, and then the first album I ever. So I got that album because I stole it from my aunt. <laughs> And then the first album that I bought was Megadeth, Rest in Peace. Okay. And I still love that whole album. I don't know. But, yeah, so as a kid, probably favorite bands was, like, Megadeth, Guns N' Roses, Alice in Chains, and I, what is it, like, top three? I don't know. It so, doesn't matter. Yeah, that's, I think. That's fine. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I had my new metal phase, which I don't want to talk about. Yeah, yeah that, no, dark so, days, for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what was the first concert you ever went to i that's great because um was it so and roses so my everybody was it megadeth no no it was it was worse than that um my family is i've mentioned before very super foreign and polish so i sort of trickster talked my aunt and my mom into don't you want to see a classic band? They're one of the classics. They're great because it was going to be Black Sabbath's last performance at Ozfest. Okay. Okay. Ozfest '99, and I talked her into that, but you know they didn't realize. You know, there's Marilyn Manson and Pantera and all this <laughs> other shit. You know, yeah. Queen, actually, what was crazy is that um that was the first year Queens of the Stone Age played. And they played on like a small second stage, literally like the size of like, I don't know, empty bottle, like a, like a 300. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And then 20 years later, they're <coughs> doing Riot Fest. Yeah, yeah. They're playing an arena. Pretty, or, yeah. Okay. Alex, it's coming your way. My way. Oh, boy. Growing up. Oh, yeah. oh, I missed Pink Floyd. That was oh. like my number one band. All right. Yeah. Last minute. Okay. All right. It just beat the clock. That's a big one. We'll accept that. Yep. Yep. All right. Now oh, yeah. Over to Alex. Yeah. Boyhood so. Boyhood favorite bands. Yeah, so I said when Mamas and Papas were a big band for me, you know, I just had California Dreamin' and Monday Monday. Dude, Creaky yeah. Alley? Yeah, Creaky Alley, yeah, of course. Such yeah. a good song. Yeah, so that was that was a big band for me, like I said. That was like 7th, 8th grade, that's when I first started really listening. Cause my mom played me like Beatles records and stuff when I was little. Mm-hmm. So that was like my earliest inspirations. But then I got into British Invasion music. This band The Four Pennies was really big for me. Wait, who was that last one? The Four Pennies. The f- they, they were like a one-hit wonder band. They did this song called Juliet. Okay. It's like kind of like a ballady kind of British Invasion song. They okay. did some rocker kind of ones, too. And, yeah, so that band I really liked. Then I got into the psych rap stuff and kind of this band, The Smoke, uh, Kaleidoscope. Jason Crest was a big, still a favorite band of mine. Um, Do yeah. you like any, um, um, like, Motown from that period? I like uh, the Four Tops a lot. Yeah. Four Tops, yeah, that's they're really good. Um, I like Temptations, the Psychedelic Shack, their record. That's really cool. All right, um, top three artists, like elementary school, Alex. So, so elementary school, Alex. Beach t- Boys, number one? Uh, yeah, I would say Beach Boys, Mamas and Papas, Beatles, like early, earliest inspirations. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. And your first concert? First concert was the Buckinghams, the Chicago band, the Buckinghams. 
I guess other than what, maybe sophomore year of high school, they played like the Jeff Jefferson Park Fest. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah dude, I love Jeff Fest. Yeah. So, yeah. Just, when when was that? That was what, probably two, maybe two thousand two, three, probably. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, that was that was the first thing that I saw Os Mutantes at uh, Metro. I think it made two thousand six. I think was that okay. the next big concert. Yeah. <laughs> Do you go to a lot of shows now? You know, I had a little phase where I would like kind of go to shows when I lived with my old roommate Tracy. She mm-hmm. was very big into going to shows, so I would tag along on stuff like that. But the last couple of years since I moved in with my girlfriend, yeah, we just um, feel like the scene hasn't been as big as it was, and I haven't gone to as many shows as I used to. I'd go to like I go to like big shows like when Rodriguez, the guy from Searching for Sugar Man, the documentary, he came. I saw that. Saw Creed Bratton from The Office. He did like a music comedy kind of thing. That's cool. Yeah, so those are kind of shows I yeah. go to now. But yeah. like you're not just going to shows for the sake of going to a show. It has to be someone that like really. Yeah, exactly. Uh huh. Yeah. I'm going through a similar transition. Mm-hmm. Like thinking back on high school, and how many shows? Yeah, just like I feel like every weekend, every weekend, every other weekend, like oh, got to go back to the Congress or like oh, yeah. two, yeah. Ni- two nights. You're, at, you're laying off. You're saying. At the, well, I'm just not intentionally, but that's just how it's kind of played out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because you don't really have time in. Well, not uh, I mean. I think I'm just a little lazier. Oh yeah. Just like mm-hmm. eh, I've kind of become where like I I have things to lose if something happens to me. Mm-hmm. Cuz cuz like the things that I'll um like like there's a band that I absolutely love. They're called Iron Reagan and I'm like I have to see this band. They're like one of my top 3 now because they're crazy like thrash metal. Like they're they're more punk, you know. And I'm like I have to see them if they come. But they're coming on a Wednesday. And I work from 5 a.m. to 5 p.m. Oh, man. And I know. Doors open at 10 p.m. And it's one of those shows that people are going to be doing backflips off stage and kicking each other in the head. So (laughs) I'm not going to work with a concussion. So (laughs) That's a sound plan. Yeah, yeah. Um, So, yeah, so you don't go to as many shows. No, no, I don't. I don't think so. No, I mean, yeah, I, just but I don't think I go to as much buddy. music shows as I used to younger. I I do like go to more comedy or um, okay, like uh, yeah, mm-hmm. like other, like so like something like if there's a crazy independent movie that's mm-hmm. playing, you know, I'll go to that. Like <clears> filming <throat> things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Alex, do you enjoy film? You know what I. Uh, I have a really weird like film taste when it comes. I like really kind of kitschy kind of comedy things like Smokey and the Bandit, okay. like Blues Brothers. <laughs> yeah. That's my and Christmas Story stuff. Yeah, like yeah. That. that's sure. my that's Cheech and my Chong. Cinema. <laughs> I, you know what Cheech and Chong's I got into way later, but like as a kid growing up, like those kind. I was in the cars and stuff. Like I say, I was a NASCAR fan, so I always like car movies growing <laughs> up. So anything with like Burt Reynolds in it and stuff like that back then nice. hooked me. And those are the kind of movies I kind of was always into. So are you I, a Fast and the Furious fan? Yeah, I like the first few. I didn't. Okay. I fell off after the first few. Okay, so yeah. like seven, you kind of lost interest. Yeah, <laughs> I think I think I saw the first three actually, okay. and called it at that. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. So my Did cinematic. You- Knowledge isn't near as broad as my music knowledge, I, for sure. I gotta ask you, uh, do you have th- any of the Cheech and Chong vinyls? I don't. <laughs> oh yeah. man, dude! I so my brother, um, he, his best friend, best friend's dad, is uh, I don't know if he's like a real estate agent or he has like a renovation type, you know, business. But yeah. he, fi- there was a woman. You, do you know Rolling Stones records? Mm-hmm. He, there was a, an old lady who lived right next door to that record store. Mm-hmm. So anything they threw out that wasn't selling, she would take. Oh, wow. Well, so she <laughs> died. Like an episode of Hoarders. Yeah. So he just picking it up. So yeah, yeah, just oh, going through the garbage. <laughs> I, you're coming with me. <laughs> so, she, so, so she had 13 crates of records oh, that man. they bought for like $100. Wow. And <clears throat> we, were so, we, we were trying to sell them individually online, but... I mean, no offense, because you're a collector, but people are so so like, no, it it can only be shipped in this type of package with I this know. type of percha- b- so I, I don't know. sell records very often. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you buy records, are you like that? I actually am. I don't care. Like, I, like you know, if a record has like a couple marks on it or whatever. Yeah. 
long as it's not skipping or something, and, or if, if it's advertised as skipping, that's fine. You know, if you get a record and it's trash and they mention that it's in great condition, it comes beat. Yeah, the guy was a dick. Mm. But <laughs> yeah, but no, I'm not super anal you know, about like, oh, it's got to be shipped in this special bubble yeah. wrap or something like. Yeah, yeah. I never give any yeah, special no, the, the, instructions I, on I, how to I, ship I, it. I, I, just, I had a person complaining to me about um, that it wasn't shipped like a uh, fragile mail or something. So that it had like extra protection if anything happened, and uh, no, but I was saying that, um, in the like there was a lot of good record. They had like every Lou Reed record, every Velvet Underground. Yeah. Um, I'm just thinking of what I liked. They had Ramones, um, Grateful Dead. I don't think Grateful Dead. Do you think that's because their records were selling? <laughs> uh, they they had uh, all the Richard Pryor and Eddie Murphy vinyls, and then I was gonna say they had the Cheech and Chong vinyl. And when you open it, you know how there's the inside sleeve. Oh, the yeah, the joint. Paper. Yeah, yeah, they That's had awesome. the fucking the Led Zeppelin. <laughs> yeah. <you know>. Yep. <laughs> That's so cool. I don't think I've ever seen a Cheech and Chong movie. No. No. Oh man! See, I mean, I was in my late twenties by the time I. Finally you say one. like you don't have like a very broad knowledge of film like mm-hmm. mine is like I always mention Bill have you seen this yeah uh, like, sure well and even like common movies like hey do you remember that part in Godfather like no <laughs> yeah <laughs> and you love I like those that. you love Scarface and you love yeah like, I love all the mafia movies yeah. and it's like all those movies that I feel like everyone else on the planet has seen but like Casino what the hell is Casino yeah like, <laughs> that's uh, you know what I, I was gonna say that was like half our uh friendship with dan russell is like yeah. when we'd greet each other we just be we just like shoot out random fucking unknown lines from mob movies <laughs> to awful. try and test each other who knows better <laughs> but, that's cool but man. uh you like the sopranos i love the sopranos yeah i mean sandra rewatch i bought the box set like the whole box yeah. set where you all watching it i <laughs> was so angry because I never, I, I was never into like wasting my money at like cons and shit yeah. and like Comic Con or something. And my a f- guy at my work was telling me, uh, there's Sports Con in uh, what's called the uh, the huge center downtown. What am I thinking? McCormick Place. Yeah, yeah, McCormick Place. Mm-hmm. And I'm like Sports Con, like so it's all a bunch of retired, you know, football stars who like flip burgers now because mm-hmm. they're nobodies. And last. Like literally, so it started. It was going to be a weekend thing: Friday, Saturday, Sunday. On Thursday, it was announced that four people, four sports people, canceled. So now we're filling them in with Sopranos people. Oh wow! I was so yeah, fucking natural. Pissed. That's yeah, yeah, right. Like, uh, they don't. They're not doing anything. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god! I was. Damn, they're the B list athletes <laughs> of, <laughs> of <laughs> yeah, right. The convention world. <laughs> they're the bench warmers. I'm going to quickly, that cat is whining because yeah. he has no one to pick on. Do it's it. the other one. Yep. Mm-hmm. Phil's on cat duty again. Is that pierogi up there? Yeah, yeah. All right, everyone. Goodbye to pierogi. Thank you for being on the show. No. Yeah. Um, all right. So now it's just Bill and Alex for about 20 more seconds because here comes Phil. Yep. <laughs> and Phil is back. So yeah. I I was going to ask uh, one question. So I um I'm a huge fan of Failure and like the whole sp- space rock scene. I don't know if you're familiar with that. I'm actually not. Yeah. It's uh it's 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 hard to explain. There really <laughs> there's there isn't any famous bands, hmm. but it's just a uh, like Auto Lux. I think is a huge ba- which is a the basis of Failure. They played on like late night, and but anyways um the Singer of the band Ken Andrews produces a crap load of people's albums, mm-hmm. and they interviewed him versus a vinyl person, and he said something like, "Wait, hang on. they versus him?" Yeah, like 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 it was like they were. So he's really into digital mastering. Okay, Ken Andrews. Yeah, and then they they I forgot who the other person was, but it was like a well known person who's very much into vinyl analog mastering. Yeah, yeah, analog, okay. and um. He he they was had a battle like yeah yeah they were pretty much debating about how like you know he says you know well this is better because this is more crisp this is you know vinyls more crisp vinyls it's like they're playing in your room a special yeah. show for you which is true and Ken Andrews was saying that I guess they tested now because you know oh it's the future and we have 4K you know television sure. that the sound of 
music is so it's <laughs> it's it's so advanced now that uh, the the way our brains are like programmed or made to be able to co- the, the 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 software has made it to where it can't pick up anything bigger than vinyl so but it's already up to that level like ba- basically so so whatever level that vinyl like like, like how crisp vinyl is he was saying that you can digitally master that sound and you can actually make it above that, but our brains wouldn't register if it's higher because it, or, it, it only goes that far. And I was wondering that what you thought. Sounds like about. a cop out. Yeah. Like, oh, I, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I, I don't. I don't know, and I don't really care. Like, I'm just like whatever. But I was just wondering how that you feel. Yeah, like that's human a, brain. I mean, that's interesting if that's the case. But I mean, if our brains can't process it, I mean, what's the point of? pushing for it right if we can't hear it anyway well it's sort of I, it to me it seemed like when somebody tries to describe what dark matter or fourth dimension is yeah. four dimensions you know mm-hmm. which it's I, i'm sort of like when they describe that i'm like well how do you know if it's not proven yeah you know how do you know you can you can't sense it if you can't sense it basically yeah, exactly so, so i don't i don't yeah, know that's, that's next level stuff right there <laughs> Going but, for but you're a vinyl fan yeah yeah so uh, yeah, I would say that definitely like vinyl. Like, I mean, I've listened to a lot of people's recordings and stuff like through like digital yeah. and analog. I personally think there's a huge difference, and there's no. Can you articulate it? Like, what is the difference? There's a digitized line that I don't know how, almost how to explain it, but it just it feels like there's this like static almost to digitized recordings. Like if you hear like a badly mastered CD. You, it, you like hear like digital skips almost. Mm-hmm. Like sometimes you'll hear them described as digital skips. Like it just it sounds like this waviness of digital crackle while the music is playing. And I don't know. You don't get that. If you does, does it sort of sound like a wah pedal on the voice? It's more like a think of like a like maybe like a like a white noise sound almost. But the white noise is like going with the music that's playing. That's it, with vinyl. With or CDs. With CD, oh. Yeah. So, I don't know. I've always, I noticed that after I really started listening to records, and ever since then, I kind of just. <laughs> sure. And plus, like, playing a record, I think it's just cooler than, like, let me bust yeah, up my you know, Zune. You have, yeah. But, you know, I mean, for on the go, you know, I still have an old iPod. I saw your old iPod in the car. I was like, oh, yeah, I yeah. I have one of those, too. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's great just, for that, you know, but. When I'm at home, there's nothing like, yeah, having a nice gatefold album you can pull out, smoke a bowl, sure, do your thing, you know. that To me, that's relaxation, so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know I know. with uh, streaming, I've definitely realized this, and it is absolutely fucking true. If you have a good ear, like if you're into music or you're a musician, mm-hmm. every time I listen to streaming, and it's not a glitch, it's just if you listen very closely – and you don't want to be caffeinated because it, you it'll fucking ruin <laughs> like like all you'll hear is that, but like even like when I listen to like an audiobook, you can he- the voice sounds almost like a wah pedal. It's like hello hello like yeah. You can tell it's streaming like a robot or something yeah yeah almost, yeah. And that's what like as soon as I notice that I'm like fuck I can't listen to this because all I'm listening to is like is this a <laughs> How person? Fake is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And sometimes <coughs> you hear commercials like that, like on TV, you hear like TV yeah. commercials and the voiceovers on these TV commercials. Like, is this like an actual human being talking or what? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? It sounds exactly when I like when I have a harmonizer pedal for my guitar yeah. and that that's what it sounds like. Yep. <laughs> and uh, I mean, I think my argument with vinyl is that, well, not argument, but just like agreeing with, I think it, vinyl is also cooler because I think there's not that many I, I hate to use the word, but epic bands now that everybody now focuses on. Let's get that one fucking hit out there. When you listen to vinyl, you're like, no, I'm not skipping tracks. You're letting it play all the way through. Got to play that because sure, yeah. every because they focused on the whole fucking album as a whole. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. That's that's the way I look at it. Especially like concept albums, like King Crimson albums and stuff like that. Those are like, yeah, those are meant to be played start to finish. Like mm-hmm. you skip something, you missed it. <laughs> you know. Yeah. But I think vinyl is very much coming back into vogue, right? There are bands that are still releasing things. There's bands vinyl. releasing shit on vinyl. That doesn't mean they're making it for vinyl. You know what I mean? Like, what do you mean? Well, like I said, focusing on where the whole album is good at, like a concept album. When's it, like, what's the... 
I mean, maybe like sleep, stoner metal. But but Pat, other than that, do you know any other like recent bands that oh, like released a concept album that you can listen all the way through? I mean, I can't think of any, but that doesn't mean it's not out there. Like, well, I listen. I, I mean, I I have 150 gigs of music on my iPod, and I can't think of any new ones. That, new bands, it's a, yeah, it's much less. It's like trying to do a bunch of hits on one album instead of trying to do an album that blends together. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I guess it's sometimes that works though too. I guess if all the songs are catchy and have hooks, it's gonna work well, anyway. But. Well, and who's to decide? Like, if the songs go together, like I've listened to a lot of really good albums, I wouldn't necessarily call them like. A concept. Yeah, no, it does. Uh, yeah, I'm not saying. Con- yeah, but yeah. Like from start yeah. to finish, like. I, I, I I've tried making my last Kroll Klex album kind of a concept album with yeah. blending in the uh, feedback on a pitch shifter, <laughs> but I mean, uh, I don't know. I just don't think. Um, I don't know. What, what like what are some recent good albums that you've heard like that are new? Recent, I don't know how new they are, but um, everybody wants by the struts was like a really great album like start to finish um are the struts like what 2000 they're or? british i think they're newer than 2000 oh okay but um like i say like way newer like 2010s um, okay okay but i mean what it's 2019 now so even that is like 10 years old mm. um like foxy shazam puts together like awesome albums yeah like they're self-titled. Oh, them. you know what? I do have a new vinyl that I really love, and that's Magic Castles from Minnesota. Oh. Have you ever heard them? Mm-mm. They're I I I think you might like them. They're definitely I would I, I don't even know. They're like in between neo psychedelic and psychedelic. Oh, nice. Yeah. But uh, it reminds me they honestly sound exactly like that first Bee Gees album. Oh, nice. that's what they. Sound. <laughs> yeah. Into that, yeah, so, so is that, that a newer album? Oh yeah, they, yeah. that came. Th- they're they're See? still around. Yeah, that is. But, you know. I yeah, think yeah. It just depends on. I guess your standards. Maybe may, no. Maybe it's. Maybe I'm just saying it's rare now, as far as like I don't know. And then the other, I mean, Deer Hunter. I I like their. They kind of had like a, concept. Cryptograms, I, th- I think, it kind of like meshed together. I don't know if it was a concept or if it was supposed to be that way, but it did mesh together. Yeah. Or maybe even like My Bloody Valentine. I don't know, but I don't know. I'm probably just bitching. All right, Bill. Whoa, All right, so, no, you wanted me to no, admit you're it. not. I'm just. No, I'm, I'm standing up, and I like I do this a lot on the show, but just I feel like there's. It's so easy to say like, oh, things were so much better back then. Like, oh, those were the days. Yeah. And you know, like 20 years. Number now, one hit by Crow Clex. That right. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> that is, yeah. See, uh, I don't know. I just like I don't think nowadays is that different than no, no, back then. I think it's really easy no, no. to get caught in that trap like Yeah. Oh it's my probably God. it's probably the same. It's probably there's probably a shitload of bands back then that just uh, isn't Count 5 kind of like one good song and the rest of their stuff was eh. yeah, they're like uh, psychotic reactions really good. They do a song called Peace of Mind that's really good, but you're right, they have some duds and they did like some or was it like chosen covers and stuff. W- was it like Jefferson Airplane like that as well? Yeah, they're kind of spotty too. Like every <coughs> album they have a couple of really good songs, but some some ones I could pass on, yeah. I always didn't know if it was Jefferson Airplane or Jefferson Starship. It's both. They were Jefferson Airplane for a long time, and then in the mid-70s they changed it to Jefferson Starship. And Was it like legal and reasons? Have, no, I think it was like a, their idea. They just wanted to change their image and, oh, okay. and stuff. And I... I haven't even tried a Jefferson Starship album ever because <laughs> <laughs> I know I never I was terrified to try it honestly because I don't even I, like uh, the first three Jefferson Airplane albums I kind of like but mm-hmm. other than that yeah like even their later ones I wasn't as into and then like I said that period of stuff I can't imagine I would have been <laughs> what would you say uh, out of as far as now and not elementary Alex what's like your favorite number one record you got probably. Um, there's an album called Tangerine Dream by Kaleidoscope that's always been like since I got into the psych music that's one that I just that's one you just put on every track's gonna be mm-hmm. really good and then I would say like a favorite band that's stuck with me this whole time is the Hollies yeah yeah I would say the Hollies or maybe I would say like people ask what's your favorite band just say it I would say the Hollies because mm-hmm. they're a band who started in British Invasion 
and the beat stuff. They did like the mod stuff. Then they did the psych stuff. Then they kept going even into the seventies, and I like some of their seventies stuff, like the air that I breathe and song like famous hits like that. Those are great songs, you know. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, yeah, I would like I would say the Hollies would probably. I my Hollies stack is like that. So. Yeah, and Man. Donovan too. He's oh my brother. god, I love Donovan. Yeah, I saw Donovan. Uh, <laughs> when last year he came to what? where did he play? It was like Park Ridge or something like really? that. Yeah, yeah. Was, oh my god, how did I miss that? Oh, yeah, no, I, th- I think I did hear about that. Yeah, everyone heard about it, but Bill. That's and uh, <laughs> we were uh, my buddy Dino. You know Dino Constantine. Who doesn't know Dino yeah. Constantine? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he uh, told me he uh, he got buddy buddy with Dino's or. Donovan's tour manager when they <laughs> Dino played a festival in Europe with Donovan they all got buddy buddy so we all got to go hang out with uh we didn't get to see Donovan a whole lot after the show but we saw him for a second and Dino got to play Donovan's guitar for a minute in the in his hotel room <laughs> and stuff awesome. like that so yeah that, that was cool. cool yeah uh uh-huh. <clears throat> oh my yeah. god <laughs> yeah that was a day to remember for sure <laughs> yeah yeah, I'd say those those two guys, or Hollies and Donovan, are guys that, like I said, my collection probably has the most of <laughs> one al- one artist. Yeah. And you say the Hollies, and I'm a pretty basic. Like I don't know as much about the genre as you do. Mm-hmm. But did the Hollies do "He Ain't Heavy, He's My Brother"? Yeah, that's okay. Them. Uh-huh. That's one of their later, like seven, like early '70s okay. songs. Which yeah, I always like that one too. Do you think that's their biggest song? Do they have a more? They do a song "Bus Stop" in the '60s. That's a really good one. Uh, say "Carrie Ann's a good one. "Pay You Back with Interest." They had a, they were a pretty big band back in the like mid, from like mid '60s to early '70s. They must have had like twenty hits <laughs> in between. Yeah. So yeah, that they're just like a band. You can listen to anything from that time, and you'll. I like it personally. <laughs> yeah, a lot. Yeah. Nice. Uh huh. Um, yeah. So, <clears throat> is there like an active psychedelic scene in Chicago? Like, do you have people you can hang out with? Like, yeah, is there a community? Yeah, there's a there's a small little group of us, and like uh, Steve Krakow just had the Psych Fest at the Hideout a couple weeks mm-hmm. ago. Nice. That was that was fun. Um, that's was it sold like, out? You know what? It didn't sell out because it was so damn cold. That was you know those were the days, yeah. like right after it was polar like, vortex. Yeah, the Wednesday time. like yeah. fifty below. Yeah, like, I had to DJ the Thursday. Hey, come to everybody's got yeah, so. everybody's got to find the vintage coats. To, right, right. Seriously. <laughs> the last moment. Right. Oh man, layering up bell bottoms. And yeah, that was rough. <laughs> yeah, there's bell bottoms. That's disco. Yeah. Uh, oh, you know, no, sixties. Yeah, they yeah. could rock till. Right, nice. They right. started in the sixties and then they got even bigger in the seventies. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Okay. But so, uh yeah. But yeah, there's definitely still an active psych scene here and I feel like California has even a bigger like when I went to California I could tell like they're they're even more hip to the psych stuff. And we are. they do a big Texas psych Yeah, yeah. Fest, yeah. Right? So yeah. Austin. I guess yeah. Austin's really No now it's too. called uh Levitation instead oh, of Austin Psych cool. Fest. Yeah. It's I I didn't know that until like a week ago. Because they, because yeah. uh, you know um, what happened with uh, so so for anybody who doesn't know, like me and psychedelics, we know, we know each other well because uh, I used to play in Kroll Klex and and you sold him an and, iPod apparently, yeah. 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 not for sale, no. <laughs> I collect them. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, but uh, no. Um. Uh. So. So. Yeah. Psychedelics would D- DJ great music at pretty much every psych or garage show that I knew. And um, I forgot how the hell I'm transitioning into this. What was <laughs> what were we talking about before? Uh, we were talking about the the psych scene, Austin Psych Fest. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. So. Um. I went out to Austin Psych Fest because I was talking to. My favorite band at the time was Brian Jones, Tom Asker, and I was talking to like even members of the band online, and everybody who loves Brian Jones, Tom Asker knows each other online now because the singer would go on, so we'd all meet in Austin, and uh, I got I actually got a lot of fans of my band just through promoting their face to face, which was absolutely fucking awesome. The first year I went was pretty cool. I mean, it was like in four different venues. So it was kind of a bitch to like take a bus in different places, but Austin is absolutely beautiful. And uh, the second year was even cooler because, I mean, I liked the lineup the first year, but the second year it was kind of in the middle of a desert, you know? There was like a, 
the tent porter potties and then the tents that you can just chill in and oh, wow. um they had a they had a um i forgot what they're called like the you know the boats that like old people have that don't go fast it's like three like paddle boats kind of thing not not a it, it's it's like three canoes on a platform like a pontoon is that what it is maybe boats that <coughs> old people have that don't go fast <laughs> <laughs> yeah no i mean i i always see people that, like it's not like like a it, canoe? It, no, no, I think it it's like uh it's like uh what are those things that you, like like a tube? <laughs> not yet. A uh, a door like in Titanic. No. No, no. You, you know when they, like when you go jet skiing or speed boating, there's there's the people who just have that boat to drink on. It's just pretty okay, much like floating like, like a, a motor boat. I don't, I don't yeah, know yeah. the name for it. Mm-hmm. I mean it honestly it looks exactly like when you know like in a Friday the 13th, you have that platform in the middle of the lake you you swim out to? Yes. It, it looks like that platform with, like, a railing around it and two canoes underneath it. It looks exact. I think it's, I think it's a pontoon. I don't know. Anyways, they had a fucking stage on a river on that thing. So there were people, like, in the water and then some people, like, sitting. That's pretty and, cool. And you could fucking... Wait, um, in the desert? Well, I mean, there was sand everywhere, so... <laughs> It was, it might, it might, I don't know. It, it, maybe it was an artificial desert but or a beach. Yeah, yeah, maybe <laughs> a no, really big. Beach. Or, or yeah, yeah, it might have been a really, really big beach. But uh, <laughs> um, they uh, there there's people like swinging from the trees and into the water. So it's a trip. Yeah, it was pretty. Uh, and you and you could go up to like all the bands were because the psych scene's real chill. They're they're always chilling with the people. Yeah. You know so. But uh, I forgot why uh, I was talking. About the, no, we were talking about the psych community. So yeah, the an psych yeah. community. Yeah, yeah, there isn't. Yeah. Oh, and and you know what? I think it, it. So it changed, and I think it kind of like. So I think Austin Psych Fest was something that boosted just the overall psychedelic neo psychedelic community up, mm. and it it's owned by co-owned by or founded by the guy from uh, Black Angels, Alex uh, Moss from Black Angels. And what happened is, I don't know if it was because of this or because they just, oh, you know, they changed the name to Levitation in honor of Rocky Erickson. Oh, there you go. And then, but I think they also changed it because the last Austin Psych Fest, so the last one I went to is 2014, but I think 2015, there was a huge, there was a huge fucking hurricane in uh, Texas. And so it th- all everywhere they were supposed to play got completely fucking like everything got canceled for yeah. insurance reasons yeah. but luckily because people were flying in yeah. from everywhere they're and they like still had the pontoon boat yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> no it, no uh, honestly like they were like the bands were like well we still are a good community we want to play for the bands so or for the fans so they they would like hey man do you got a big basement and tell all the fans hey go to this guy's basement we're still playing that's cool. So, so but now I th- it's levitation. Yeah, now it's levitation. Go th- to the basement. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Puts the lotion on its skin. <laughs> that sounds like a good time. Yeah. And the it reason I ask about it, and maybe I'm being presumptuous, uh, but you're a DJ. Mm-hmm. Are there other psychedelic DJs? Yeah, not very many here. There's it, all throughout the country, you know, you'll find, and all throughout the world, you'll find a couple specifying in psych DJs, but then... There's no bigger fish than psychedelics. That's right. King you know, like jungle. my buddy Eric Eric Collin, who got me and Mo kind of our first gigs, he, he's like one of the early guys. He just doesn't DJ anymore. Like He just doesn't do mm. it anymore. Steve Krakow, I guess, you know, he's, but he's like a jack of all trades. He's in like three bands. Yeah, what is it? Uh, stuff. Plastic Crime Wave Syndicate. Plastic Crime Syndicate. He's in a band with his brother, Pans of Hydra. He helps out in and does some other stuff. Uh, yeah. So, yep. Have you have you ever been challenged? Like, do you ever have to prove your knowledge of the psych scene? Um, I'm grabbing right. a cigarette, Bill. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, because I, I just imagine there being a stand up like, oh, you think you're underground? Well, this is how underground <laughs> I am. Have you know, you I guess. Of 
I guess it's tools? not a whole lot of like having to prove yourself. You just kind of do it when you go to your friend's house and you bring over your recent records, and they're like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> you know, okay, I guess, I guess that's kind of how or how it goes. Do you kind of yeah. like check out someone's record collection and be like, "Oh yeah, I got this guy." Yeah, oh, that's kind of how he's that an is. amateur. <laughs> sometimes he's doing. There's sometimes that happens where I see somebody's stuff. I'm like, "Oh damn!" Like, yeah, like my like Constantine's collection is ridiculous. Like when I see his stuff, I'm like, "Damn." Like, wasn't it, wasn't it like right. last time I went to your place? It was uh, Andy and Paul Piper already going over which version of Pink Floyd is better <laughs> <laughs> like for for hours. Which like, mono press is yeah. better? Yeah, I mean, like I'm like we're here to meet new people, <laughs> but I am getting entertained watching you guys argue. But. And I think that was when we met. Yeah, I don't that's know if it. You remember yeah, way back yeah, when yeah, you mentioned Tracy? I think she was there. Yep, yep. There was a DVD playing. Yep. Paul Piper brought. Like canned, whatever canned like beans or something for the, for the evening. He crashed in my place that night. Yeah, he he was an interesting character. He still is. He has like serious rants on Facebook and stuff. So. Oh yeah, mostly about Pink Floyd. No other stuff. <laughs> I don't even know. Yeah, just like his own stuff going on with him. But All right. yeah, <laughs> but yeah, he's. Uh, you know, I, I was I was gonna say um before I forget, like the whole um how I was talking about like concepts albums. I always thought it was funny that um. I mean, this was just a question as far as swinging the pendulum toward, or because I was saying like maybe vinyl is better and this digital argument is stupid, but swing the pendulum against vinyl is, I was thinking like, you know, Sleep, who's stoner metal and has concept albums, or, or Psychedelic, who has concept albums, wouldn't somebody who's a stoner be too lazy to flip the side <laughs> once it's going, you know? <laughs> like... Like once they're once they're into it, I don't know. I I always thought about that. You know, I mean, stone or, or, or be or or be too stoned to handle a uh, record player. Yeah, I mean, Alex, do you ever smoke? I mean, I I do partake in a little herbal remedies every now and That's then. That's illegal. Yeah. You know that, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we'll yeah. Say this is oregano rip- right here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I would say that a lot of um people's like when it comes to listening to music and smoking, it kind of goes hand in hand for me personally, and mm-hmm. no matter how. Smoked out, I would get. I, I if the record's over, I'm gonna get up and turn it over. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like that's just in silence. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So, I'm I've always sure. heard about people arguing about like um, <laughs> wait, when that. Wait, that was your big argument against vinyl that you're gonna get too high. To oh no, no, record. I was, I, I was, I was just like a wonder in my mind. No, okay. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> the that, pendulum yeah. swings back. The pendulum. You have to think like, oh, crap. you're too fucking stoned <laughs> to listen to this. <laughs> 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 no. Sorry, what were you saying? Sorry, I'm a goofy guy, but <laughs> no, I'm um, uh, d- haven't don't like usually people debate over like who's got the best new needle or something. That is like a debate like some people really get into. Me personally, like I feel like my system at home, I have a I have like a Newmark turntable and some Sony speakers and adapter, and it sounds really good. Like is it, it is the right pressing? Oh, yeah. Is that the same system you used when you DJ? You know what? I usually when I DJ, for me just because I only have one Newmark turntable at the moment and not the mixer, I usually only DJ at places that already have the deck set up already, okay. which a lot of bars nowadays have already. Like hmm. it's been really rare for me to like go somewhere and they don't have turntables. That's really cool. Yeah, yeah. So, luckily, but you were saying you got a sweet setup at your house? Yeah, yeah. Like I got one nice setup at home for like home listening, and it's yeah. Like I said, when it sounds right, your pressing's right. You're in the studio with them. You know, and that's how I see it. But some guys have thousand dollar turntable, fifteen hundred dollar receivers, and another thousand dollar speakers. Sounds great, but I don't think it sounds money wise like, yeah, that much. Thousand dollars worth. Of yeah, like greatness. that much better than what I'm doing with. Like I said, my Dino gave me my receiver. I have. I bought my speakers at a thrift shop, and I splurged on the turntable but th- that was like 150 <laughs> yeah, <that's, laughs> so as so, far as splurges go yeah so. yeah for me yeah that's a, that's a splurge and how long ago was this <laughs> oh, a couple of years ago i used to have a, this a sony turntable that i got at dusty groove for like 40 bucks and is that still open oh yeah dusty groove yeah, yeah. yeah. on ashland mm-hmm. nice yeah, that's a great record store that's yeah. probably one of the last really good record stores in the city unfortunately the record stores have become very saturated and very picked over and the people who work in record stores i feel like end up p- getting the good stuff before it hits the floor <laughs> so that's the same with every fucking goodwill <laughs> yeah <laughs> so it's it's just kind of a fact like a lot i won't name drop 
places, but <laughs> a lot of the good record stores of when I first got in, where I could find like hundred dollar records for twenty bucks, I haven't found jack shit for. Did you go years. to a Amoeba when you were in California? I went to Amoeba. I would say that was a letdown. <laughs> that was a big letdown. Oh no, why? <laughs> Just I mean, there was some cool stuff that I had already bought ten years ago. And but just like yeah, there just wasn't really any pick like through. A, yeah, it was just very pick through, and there's a lot of chud. <laughs> yeah, uh, I've never heard is chud. Uh, chud is a term for a bad record. I yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's all kinds of record in you. You amateur vinyl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but my bad. Uh, well, I was. I thought like, oh, Chud. You're, I've never heard of that band. You're, you're, you're the next cat getting kicked out. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. oh yeah, dude. Chud for sure, dude. Yeah. Final. Even Betty plays them on her, you know, claws, you know, oh, as a needle. Yeah. Uh, I've embarrassed yeah. myself enough. Um, you know, I always wondered, what do you think of like when, um, when a good record, when a like cra- <coughs> really well record, that's you know whatever bands. Whatever band there is, they always like over release their best record, right? Mm-hmm. And then what do you think of it when it's remastered? Is that like shittier quality? I never understood what that is. Sometimes it's pretty sometimes it's pretty close to the same thing, you know? It's not uh, Is it? Yeah. I, 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 I thought it meant like they run it through a digital studio. Sometimes they, they do and then like I said, you're gonna get that digital vibe on these things sometimes. Okay. So then like I said that's to me, like I said, that's not even worth yeah doing <laughs> you know like and then and then like you see like five dollar records that they read like originals you can get an original of the record like a jefferson airplane record you can get for 10 15 dollars they just reissue it for colored vinyl remastered Ooh. sound 25 bucks for the reissue and you can get the original for 10 bucks mm. you know <laughs> it's just kind of i think that's when record collecting has kind of hit the plateau and it's lost its way yeah, yeah. I, I um weirdly talk about stoners who listen to vinyls but i accidentally bought rolling stones their satanic majesties three fucking times Mm -hmm. because first time i bought just like the regular copy yeah and then i went i don't know i think i went to amoeba in san francisco and i'm like oh i don't fucking have this because they had a hologram cover where it's an actual like the old school holograms where it's like the plastic yeah and then I found it again, I think, in Texas, but this time it was like a metallic, shiny version. And I'm like, fucking Christ, I have this album three times, you know. Have you have you ever had to, uh, have you ever DJed anything that you would say you didn't like? I don't know. You know, I usually pick my stuff out before, and sometimes, like, if I uh, bring extra stuff that I wouldn't have normally played, if, like, you know, if I run long on my sets or something... Like, I'll bring, like, album, like, a compilation album with songs that I know, like, will be dancey at the bar, but I necessarily wouldn't have played. Yeah. You know? But like it, other like, than that, I guess that's... Like, it, was there ever, like, a, I don't know, like, a, we want to hire you for a breakdance 80s rap night, and you're like, oh... That's I, the thing. It's unless you have the collection for me to play and the stuff for me to play it on, I just, like, couldn't do it. And I wouldn't know what to play. I'd be yeah, lost. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't know, like, what sounds good after this or anything you know oh, yeah yeah so, yeah that would be yeah that would be interesting and i've had people like the craziest thing i ever did i dj'd for my buddy's wedding which was it was like a pre-made set all i had to do was like just literally just bit play on the playlist on sure the nice yeah and he just wanted me to do that for him in his wedding so did you have to make little announcements like oh calling all the single ladies to the dance floor Luckily, i didn't have to do that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no? they, they, oh, they had a whole mc guy that oh, his no. b- his best friend did like all the mc and stuff so so did they just <laughs> yeah. use speakers the, oh yeah the, he had the <laughs> so sometimes i had to switch it over and let the let his buddy do oh, the sure. mc stuff yeah but um yeah that was that was fun Actually, it was apparently I had a happy accent with that because um, he was starting to lose it. My buddy, who was at, he was at the they were doing the vows at the altar. He was starting to lose it. I accidentally touched something while I was trying to set it up, and the music started playing in the middle of the vows. <laughs> I was like, "Oh shit!" I just what song? Fucked. Do you remember? It was what, one what, he had what, like a whole list of like really obscure like power pop and glam <laughs> records. That's what he's into. And that's what he. Uh, <laughs> what do you mean he was starting to lose it? He was starting to like, get emotional. Like, oh, he was okay. To start crying, <laughs> you know, just by doing the vows and stuff. Yeah, he yeah. Like, he thanked me afterwards. He's like, dude, if that didn't happen, I would have just like started bawling at the altar. Yeah, yeah. And, like that little 
thing of awkwardness. Yeah, you yeah, absolutely. Tension and I guess yeah, he said yeah, I was about <laughs> so I was I thought he'd be pissed. But I'm totally going to get so fucking emo at <laughs> 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 wedding. I know it right away. Yeah. <laughs> the wedding I did, Eric cried from like start to finish and he had to publicly announce like I'm okay. I'm okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was beautiful. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, then I may as well do something that I haven't done, like shrooms. I mean, if it doesn't bring out that emotion. If I'm going to cry anyways. You're getting married, right? <laughs> yeah, no, that that's definitely how you want to remember your yeah. wedding day. Yeah, kill two birds with one. If I am going to cry, it's going to be uh, right. from shroom panic. You know? <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. That sounds, yeah, that's <laughs> def- No, don't fucking do that. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> we'll put the shrooms in my ma's stuff. That's yeah. all of that. Absolutely. But uh, yeah, I was gonna. S- I had two. Th- I was gonna say, uh, Bill, have you? Do you own a record player? I do not. Well, I own an old Vitrola. Mm-hmm. Um, mm. What is that? It was like, and Alex, you probably know this better than I do. It was like a big fucking like wooden case. Yeah, like, it's like a, it and it folds speakers open on either side. And it yeah, like yeah, it be like lid. a tabletop. That is exactly what I got right there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that, uh, right, you yep. see, I've got one of those. Yeah, that's it. Yep. Uh huh. It could play records. Uh, it had an FM radio tuner. How did you get it? It was in the house when we moved in. Wow. And it went in my room. So I like, have only ever used it for its like audio purposes once. Other than that, I have a massive fucking tube TV set up on top of it, which I'm pretty sure is probably yeah. like ruined the outside of it from like mm-hmm. the weight of this massive behemoth of a television. Um so I guess technically, yeah, I have a record player. Do I use it? No. Mm-hmm. Do I own vinyl? Yes. Do I ever play them? No. Mm-hmm. Um. I um funny story with about say nothing. Uh, say nothing was uh, the third member of our crew. Mm-hmm. He's he's doesn't really go on anymore. Yeah. We um, I kind of uh used to be a really bad person. I used to <laughs> break into people's houses, mm-hmm. and we uh we 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 broke into a. Com- uh, I'm good. We we broke into a community park. Wait, place. he was a bad person, but we broke into. No, I, no, somebody we did. Were, it wasn't we were me. Both bad people. Okay, yeah, but we matured, you know. Right. And now we have this, in, you know, loving podcast. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. But, <laughs> anyways, so um, I uh no, I remember it was so goofy because we, I don't know why we're like, well, we gotta we gotta practice to get better, and we we just tried um going into his uh, community pools building because they had a lot of cool shit in there and um the only w- they they had this shower window open because uh there's always like uh you know you know there's fucking mold forming there and flies going in in the summer so it was li- literally like a, f- a foot by a foot mi- by a foot by two feet big so he john had to get on my shoulders and it was hurting me so much that i threw him up and he landed face first in the shower and i'm like dude take whatever there's there and the only thing that was there was that record player dude. so yeah i don't know so some some kids aren't listening to any nursery rhymes at a day camp yeah. but yeah i don't know i honestly it works well though because you connect it to there's an output and you put it into a good amp yeah and it fucking That's sounds right. great yeah but uh yeah. So they had a record There's player, a but no records to steal? Well, you know, the records, they, I mean, I remember when I was in kindergarten, they would fucking play, like, soothing uh, nursery rhymes or, you know, old MacDonald had a farm, you know, on probably slow speed, just so, oh, I'm getting drowsy. Oh, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, <that's laughs> I want to go home. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go back to take. <laughs> what happened? Play it backwards. Yes. <laughs> So um yeah I uh so there were records but John didn't feel like stealing them. No no actually he took that and he took a VHS of Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well okay no 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 not to not to you know give him a bad reputation he opened the doors for us and that's those are the two things I took because because yeah I didn't know what. Oh so you yeah. took the record. Yeah 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> well he broke yeah. in man face first. <laughs> 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 so, and anyways uh, you you boys. You know, you you guys want to know a crazy fucking thing that I found out recently? So, um, <laughs> well, I guess more crazier than that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Right, no, yeah, let's hear it. well, no, um, I uh, I really love Pink. F- Pink Floyd is like the band I will go to the grave with. That's What's like your what favorite I, album. That's the thing. When I grew up, it used to be 
animals. Dark Side of the Moon or Wish You Were Here as a child. But now I fucking adore The Wall. I love it. And I, I like the that to me, the movie with it, that's like the best fucking piece of art. There will be nothing in my life that will surpass that, in my opinion. Have you and, seen Bill and Ted? <laughs> yeah. But uh, and, and anyway, anyway, so because of that, I was thinking, well, fuck, because I got my uh, I got a ring, my first tattoo, a ring tattoo, because yeah. I, I can't wear metal rings at my welding job. It'll zap me. Oh, so yeah. <clears throat> can't do this. <laughs> yeah. So I uh, I was thinking, man, I what I'd really love to get is have you seen the wall, Bill? No. Have you? Have you? I haven't seen it actually. Well, so it's really. It's one of those things, you know how the, there's a bunch of in like petty people who will like s- for example describe the meaning of the shining or yeah. 2000 sp- yeah. or clockwork orange that's that's kind of how it is around the wall people <laughs> like me yeah <laughs> but <laughs> but uh so so that's kind of what the wall has but the what it actually means the, the the movie is pretty much about a guy who he's got a shitload of issues because he lost his dad from the world war england told him there'd be these many benefits but it left england and rubble rubble you know so now he's like left with his domineering mother and has to deal with those fucking issues and ends up an addict and like um in between him explaining his story there's these flashbacks of the war Mm -hmm. and the wall is supposed to signify the wall that he's building around people because of all his issues and that like all in all, you're just another brick in the wall. You're just adding to me fucking hating people. And I thought that was, like, great. And one of the things he does, like, the f- the first scene in the movie, which is fucking great, he plays a parody of Hitler, like, telling all these people, this is what you have to do. This is, like, it's supposed to signify, like, this is what people do to fuck up people's emotions. Yeah. So I wanted to get, you know, the there's that wall symbol, the two hammers oh, with the yeah, yeah. yellow and red, right? Have you have you seen that, Bill? No, I don't know it. It's it's just two ha- you know how like uh I never knew if you, that meant. If you if you put two hammers like if they were walking like a cartoon, two hammers stuck together, you know what I mean? Okay, yeah. So it's like two hammers and then it's red and white behind it, almost like a Polish flag, you know? And he has that on his arm because he's supposed to be like the parody Hilt- Hitler. Gotcha. So is that like kind of like the swastika ish? Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's but it's supposed to. It's kind of it does. It signifies that album, the wall, because that's what's on the cover and everything. Other than the, you know, there's the regu- the other cover with the brick wall and then the face screaming out of it. You know, like uh, like the red star for twenty one twelve. What is it? Oh yeah, the yeah. Rush album. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. That's that's kind of what it uh, signifies. So like, um, I wanted to get like I think it'd be fucking cool as hell to get that hammer thing on my left arm, like, and then maybe like a brick sleeve or something. Yeah, because I love that. And then I was listening to a bunch of podcasts this week. Have you guys heard of Christian Piccolini or Picciolini? No, no. He's a skinhead who grew up in Chicago, and he like went fucking nuts. And like like went global and shit, and then he got out of it, and now he has a group that preaches love, and that all these like 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 all these positive like th- basically that all racists just have something that they hate about themselves, and that's why they're racist. Mm-hmm. And the crazy thing is, the group he was in was called Hammerskins, and that was they instead of the flag, they put a gear behind it as their logo. So I'm like, I don't know if I want to get that tattoo anymore. Well, you, you were know? gonna get it as a tattoo. I thought you were talking about a patch. No, no, I want to get it as a tattoo. Don't get that tattooed. Yeah, I wouldn't do it. <laughs> I, I'm. Yeah. I, I think if I get the, I'm still gonna get it just because I think it's cool. But I and be, and besides, like I've, that's the first I've heard of it. I don't that's know. True. I don't know anybody who has that as a fucking skinhead. That's and, part of it. Yeah, that's true. And then and then also, what other person is gonna be like? Oh, you're racist because you got two hammers. Like I don't know. All it takes is one. All it takes is one, and I don't know. I don't know. I I, I just I love that album. You I can educate them. Man. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. It's a conversation starter. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. What, isn't that what everybody wants who gets a tattoo? <laughs> well, this is when my uh, dog Fufu died from eating too many Cheetos. You know? yeah. And I'm actually, get to ever have a tattoo. I'm tattoo free. 
Your tattoo. I was going to ask you. You have yeah. no tattoos. No tattoos. Is that? There's only one thing I would get a tattoo of. It's this album cover, the fox. For fox sake, it's this really psychedelic fox, super tripped out looking. I don't even know how much it would cost <laughs> to have it done. A bunch. Because, well, yeah, <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's so detailed, so ridiculous. But I've always thought if I ever was to get a tattoo, that's the only thing I would do. <laughs> yeah. What What's keeping you from getting it? Just. <sighs> Just because, like I said, I know how much it would cost, and just I end up, like I said, my thing is buying records usually, and sure. me and my girlfriend we'd have a have a condo together and stuff. So you know that getting a tattoo is just something that's in that for. That right. would probably be a lot of money, right? The whole fox. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, and if it's as psychedelic as you say it is, like yeah, yeah. colors and shit, yeah. Yep, it's pretty ridiculous. Yeah, I could show Phil here. I mean, um, but yeah, it's um. Pretty, yeah, like that, that's the only other thing. I, I thought I thought it was <laughs> funny the connection though. Um, what I was saying because like, so that's like the ha- the hammer skin logo, right? And then what's what I think is funny is that I love that movie because I relate to like having those issues and building a fucking wall. And I think it's funny that so I used to in high school I hung out with a huge punk slash skinhead gang. Where a lot of where a lot of them went straight up racist skinhead into the Hammerskins, and what I think is funny is that that when I read the article on Wikipedia, they're like, "This is their logo," because and like they didn't get it because that character in the wall in Pink Floyd, that's supposed to be a parody. Like this is supposed to it's supposed to mean like this guy's a piece of shit, but they use that logo, so it it almost like made Pink Floyd mad. Why would you, you know? It would be like idolizing somebody who's an idiot in a movie. I, I don't know, uh, Patrick. Uh, you know, Patrick from SpongeBob is our you know skinhead logo. <laughs> you know, so it's so it's like. But but the thing that I thought was funny is I remember when I went to therapy for anxiety. I was like, I I was working with a huge fucking like gun nut racist, and I'm like, man, you know what? It's fucking insane because I I have I meditate a lot and I have like great like pretty well intuition. I sometimes seem like an ass, don't have the longest linguistics or terminology, but but I am very well at just a lo- spiritually and, 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 and even just in general feeling things out much more, I think, than the average person okay. from meditation. And I, 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 I don't know. It, it, uh, it's easier for me to see the big picture than the small problems, I guess, is what I'm saying. And the thing that I thought was that I found funny is that all these old – people who went racist skinhead and even this guy they all had issues with their fathers and considering how that movie goes along i'm like wow that's that's i wonder why they like that movie you know Uh, we're on a tough time (coughs) constraint alex how are we doing how we doing uh what time is it it's 149 what time what time you think we get to foster we could leave at i would say 210 220 Oh yeah, that's fine. So right. we got about yeah. twenty, got thirty minutes, half an hour, yeah, yeah. yeah. ish. Got to make it count. Yeah, Alex, good stuff. Tell me, do you listen to any radio stations? Like ninety four point seven, the oldest okay. station. Is that that's about it. Okay. Or the Me TV, the Me TV radio oh, the station. Eighty eight point seven. Yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah. That's a Me TV. Yeah. They have a station. Eighty eight point seven. They have an oldie station. That's pretty good. Actually, they play the best stuff. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, I it's literally the last radio station on the dial. Eighty eight point seven. If you go one notch down, it goes back to one o nine or whatever it yeah. goes up to. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I know eighty eight point nine used to be like a college metal station, and then eighty nine point one used to be like a college pop station. Mm-hmm. Yep, 88.7. Me and Bill are all about 90.9, right? That's WDCB. Right. All yeah. things jazz plus blues, news, and more. Yeah. That was always fun, too, dude, in, like, college radio. I did that a little bit. Oh, man. Yeah. DJ do you, do you like any uh, jazz? Oh, I like a lot of, like, uh, kind of like, you know, like the really, like, like I guess more like the acid jazz kind of vibe. Yeah, yeah. You know, like more like the trippy. Afro-Cuban kind of jazz? Yeah, yeah, that kind of stuff, yeah. Have you ever heard of uh, Les Baxter? I've heard of him, but I never actually tried his music. I've seen okay. his records around and stuff. Like people kind of, I always see his name around when he talks about stuff like that. So I hate Les Baxter. Okay, man. What's your, what's no, your I don't worst? Know Les Baxter. Yeah, yeah. I just I was just about to be. What's your worst album? If you know him that well, huh? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just trying to stir the pot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Had some controversy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Who's Les Baxter? 
I honestly don't know. <laughs> actually, what? no, no, no. I, I, I know. All I know is his one is like I have like three albums by him, but I don't know anything about him. Is what I'm. <laughs> okay. No, I no, you're just making no, up a name. No, no, no. <laughs> okay. No, no. So I, he's I. He's uh, a musician. Yeah, yeah. I heard about him because like, there's that uh, YouTube. Uh, What's in my bag at Amoeba? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, King Gizzard was at the store, and they they got like I was like, oh, I, I wonder what this is that they got. I wonder what this is, and I checked out Les Baxter, and I love it. It, you know what it? I don't know how else to describe it. It reminds me of that chill, almost like big bandish music that's like in the background of like the '60s Batman movie. Yeah. You know, I uh-huh. I, I can't like it, it would be like if there were like a rich yuppie party <laughs> in the. In the Hollywood Hills of the '60s, that they'd be playing Les Baxter type. I don't know. Oh yeah, that's cool. I have to give that, give that so, a shot. So, quick shout out to our unofficial sponsor of the week, Les Baxter. Check out his latest album. Yeah. <laughs> that, yeah. yeah. That was good, right? Smooth transition. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say for a deadhead, Bill. Um, have you ever heard of the Chicago band Mountain Bus? No, I don't think so. They sound fun. I'll have to. Yeah, they're from what 1970. It's they a lot of people like say like they do the dead better than the dead. They only had one album. Okay, but people really yeah compare them. Interesting, to that. and they're from Chicago too. So it's that's local cool. Vibes, yeah, so. yeah. I'll, I'll send you a link of that. <laughs> yeah, please do. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I uh, I don't know if they can do the dead better than the dead. Yeah, man, I I don't think. Yeah, I mean, well, I, I mean, who? Can, never mind. Yeah, yeah. never mind. Dark Star Orchestra does a pretty good job. <laughs> I don't. There's so many dead cover bands. Like I'm, I went to a festival last summer, and it was all either Grateful Dead cover bands, bluegrass bands, or bluegrass covers of Grateful Dead songs. Yeah, and it was magic. It was so good. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm a really cool guy. Yeah, thumbs up, bro. Yeah, babe. So, do you have? I uh, think like when it comes to like the record collecting, like. Yeah, I get like I said before, it kind of hit its plateau. Like for me personally, I don't collect as much as I used to because it's got so expensive. Like records that I got in 2010, 11 for twenty bucks are selling for eighty bucks now. Really? Yeah, and the stuff I didn't get for twenty bucks back then, I have to pay that for now. <laughs> it's kind of like, <laughs> See, do, do you ever suck the demand. fun out of it? Yeah. Do you ever like comb through your collection as far as like if you want to get get stuff that's new and be like, oh, I don't really dig this anymore? If there's something like one time Dusty Groove had this record that like Holy Grail record, it, it, they had it priced at three fifty, it <laughs> three hundred fifty. What was it? Uh, this Chicago band called Omega. They did an mm. album from, called Michigan Avenue. It's like this. Su- I think they probably pressed maybe two hundred copies and mm-hmm. the late 60s you know it's like really really obscure and they had it priced at 350 and i was like i gotta get this so i asked them to put it on hold for me it's like i don't, obviously don't have cash to get this so right. what i did was yeah i pulled a bunch of stuff that i only liked one song of and the rest was really bad or something because i like albums that sometimes just have a couple good songs i can deal sure. with it but yeah i ended up selling i think almost 200 dollars worth of stuff to dusty groove <laughs> And I paid then one fifty out of pocket, and I got this crazy record that I never even thought I would hold in my hands. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so. I can't believe they fell for it. Like, hey, all right, I don't have the cash, but I have a lot of really bad records. Well, that's the thing. Like they're Dusty like, Groove okay, is, yeah. yeah, their big thing is they, like, yeah, you can bring them their records that you don't want. They, they, I always thought Dusty Groove was the best at paying out. Like if hmm. you bring in records to sell, they always give you nice. I was always surprised what they gave me. I've done it a couple of times. Yeah, once yeah. me uh, and my brother got sick of, you know, individually selling that thirteen crates from that old lady. <laughs> we just went to uh, record breakers and we're like, "How much you do? Like, will you give us for this?" You know, and then yeah. I think they give us like two hundred dollars for all thirteen, which yeah. we didn't care. I mean, oh, yeah. I, I I kind of I kind of he let me go through it first, so I kind of picked out like everything I liked, kind yeah, of like all the, the valuable stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they they did yeah they had some like especially for now like David Bowie and Queen like first press first press you know, yeah that's that's but, uh, stuff now. I mean like the stuff that I actually liked to keep there's like every Ramones album which I mean I don't know punk on vinyl this isn't really that amazing but still it was cool to that original have. Velvet Underground those are all over a hundred dollars a piece now have easy you, I mentioned it before on uh, this show uh, uh, podcast but have you ever heard, heard about that Peel Banana one. Of the the Andy Warhol one? Oh, the Nico? 
Where do yeah. you go play? Yeah. But, but the one that you peel and you and it's and Oh, you can see the banana under yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, if you have a press of that. That yeah, one is like that's crazy money. <laughs> if thousands. the banana's unpeeled? If, it, if, if the <laughs> banana's still stuck on the thing there, yeah. Because you can find <laughs> copies around at record stores every now and then it'll pop up one, but if the banana is peeled on it. Right. Yeah. And they still want fifty, sixty bucks for the peeled banana version. There's a there's a guy with like white velvet gloves. Uh, this was resealed. This peeled banana. Right. Uh, yeah. The forensic investigator. <laughs> yeah, One percent the price. Like this is what record collecting has become. Like how deep the peel of the. What was uh what was what was the first record that you owned? First record I ever ever like owned a was, vinyl record. Yeah. yeah. Was um this band the sixty band called Harper's Bazaar. Mm-hmm. They do this sunshine pop song called Feeling Groovy. Yeah. It was uh, they had this I. Because I was always into, like, dressing up and, like, and looking, like, like with suits and stuff. And these guys just look super sharp and stuff. And I remember it was at uh, a thrift store. My mom was always into buying stuff at thrift stores. I was a little kid. And um, I was just like, oh, can I get this? Because it was probably, like, a dollar, two dollars. This is the vinyl? Yeah. Okay. And that was the first record I've... Because, like I said, my mom used to play me Beatles records and stuff. So I always was kind of used to having records. Even as a kid, that's the first way I ever listened to music. I listened to records before I ever had a CD player. So, hmm. yeah, I was. Uh, that was the first one at the Harper's Bazaar record. I still have it. I have it framed, actually. <laughs> you still like that song? Is it a good song? Yeah, there's a couple other good ones. Actually, that famous song isn't on that record, but I knew that band from that song, so I bought it. That's why I wanted yeah. to try it out. And there was a couple good songs on it, I remember, yeah. <laughs> nice. Yep. <laughs> what was uh, your first final, Bill? Oh, God. All right. So I'm not really a vinyl person. <laughs> so, like, I've, you know, like, I've, I don't think I've ever played a record in my life. So technically, the first vinyl I saw, uh, I got at a flea market uh, because they just had a vinyl bin, and I went through it, and they had something by Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. I don't remember, like, what album. Yeah. I just remember it was Tom why, Petty. Why, why do you sound ashamed about that? They're good. That Yeah, but it's not, like... So it really says nothing about me. It's just oh, yeah. like that was my first vinyl. Yeah. I yeah, never yeah. listened to it. A better story is like my first cassette or my first CD. And I'm going to tell those stories now. Yeah, I thought um, we already said, no? You didn't already see your first uh, album? That, mm-mm. Oh, yeah, no, you, we didn't go to you. No. Sorry, man. That's cool. I wasn't. <laughs> I wasn't gonna bring it up. That's <laughs> that's fine. Yeah, that, um, yeah. So for Christmas, I think I was eight years old. I got a Walkman, and it was like a cassette player, and an AM/FM radio tuner, and a TV tuner. I could catch TV signals and listen to it on this Walkman. Yeah. It was insane. Uh, and it came uh, from Santa with two cassettes. One was, I think, the Sounds of Summer, the Beach Boys' greatest hits. Oh. Uh, on cassette, nice. and the soundtrack to Austin Powers, I don't know if it was The Spy Who Shagged Me or International Man of Mystery, yeah. but one of those. Awesome, yeah. Those are my first cassettes. So those really <laughs> define who I am as a person now. Yeah. yeah. Um, first CDs, I got Bob Marley's Legend as a stocking stuffer one year, mm-hmm. and then the first ones I bought were the Styx Anthology, and uh, Collective Souls Greatest Hits album. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh. Back, yeah. I was um, like sixth grade, however old I was back then. Um, so that's my story. Yeah. How are we doing on time? We got, uh, let's see. We got eight minutes left on the yeah. recorder, so I think we should do the eight minutes and then wrap up. Okay, because, perfect. Uh, can, I oh, ask, can I ask one final question to yeah. Alex? Is that. Are I was going to tell it quick. You guys so both can ask. Yeah. That. Do you want to ask yours first? Uh, no, I was going to tell a quick tape story because I forgot. So you, Guns N' Roses was not my first tape. Oh, my God. Right. I'm sorry. <coughs> I'm sorry. All right. Before, th- before that, my ma gave me this tape. And Yanni. those songs fucking st- stuck with me forever. No, she gave it to me because she didn't like it. And I was in love with it. It was, it was a comp. I don't know why she got it. I think she got it because she wanted... S- Cause so she's super Polish. She got something to play in the work area. Cause so she was an interior designer. So we had a sweatshop in the basement. We had like <laughs> what cassette yeah. was it? <laughs> it? It was it was a co- the compilation was called Get a Job. <laughs> compilation. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> but this is good work music, right? Get a job. You know? Oh, that's perfect. And, and and what it was was like a compilation of uh, black Motown artists. 
like uh, Aretha Flank- Franklin and. Uh, I think that's a title. This is one of the Motown songs. Get a job. I forgot what band does it. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> so okay. So it was Motown. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it was. It was like Aretha Franklin and the. You know. It's how sweet it is to be loved by. Like. Oh yeah. Just a bunch. So uh, that I, I don't know if that tells a lot about me. But my first vinyl, I did not buy this. Sure. But Everyone's so defensive about yeah. their first vinyl. No, no, no. Okay, no. <laughs> this definitely represents me. I um when Rolling Stones used to have a bunch of people like bands that would come that you meet and they gave it away for free. So this sure tells a lot about me. You got I, Use Your Illusion 1 by GNR on vinyl. On vinyl, <laughs> I got Cottonmouth Kings. That's, oh yeah, Cl- Rolling Stones. Clear, no, 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 Clear Green uh, vi- vinyl with Peace Not Greed <laughs> in 20 <laughs> different remixes. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I think I think I think that vinyl, I'm not even joking, I think... I it's was probably like, worth thousands now. I, I, I think I threw it against the wall to see it, like how it shatters. <laughs> yeah, that's a powerful image. Like not even because I was like, you know, didn't like the record. I was just like, oh, what what happens to records when you throw them? Oh, no, dude, you're down with the crown. I got yeah. it. It's the Cottonmouth Kings. <laughs> <laughs> Alex. Yeah. What's Psychedelic Kerner. Yeah. Psychedelic music. Mm-hmm. I feel like is often associated with drug use. Mm-hmm. Do you think the two go hand in hand, or is there? St- do you know? Yeah, you know what's funny because when I first got into, like I said, I was into the sixties music, and I found psychedelic music in high school. I didn't even smoke. I didn't. I found smoking until what until I was nineteen. I had already been pretty deep into the psych music, so I. Okay. So I guess technically, I guess you don't need it, right? So because I was loving it at that time, sure. but what when I started smoking and everything, uh, yeah, I. It just got better. It got even, yeah. They definitely go hand in hand after the fact. But do I feel like you, if you don't do drugs, can you not, will you not enjoy psychedelic music? No. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's, well, because one of the things I was going to say earlier is like when we were talking about the Grateful Dead and how great they are and how much we of the whole love episode, us, you mean? We love them. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, so. I was thinking like, oh, you don't like the dead? Well, you've never listened to them on drugs. And it's like... That's what people have said? That I've heard that. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I, I agree. Like with I, thought you're, I, th- I thought you were telling me. That I that. am telling you. No. That. No, no I way. just... So I feel like there's... <laughs> like, no, no, that's really fucking stupid to say, I feel like, because that I've heard the same thing about fish. Well, you, you haven't been on acid into a fish show. I'm like, well, I mean... You could be on acid and watch somebody shit, and it might be amazing, you know? And I think it depends on the person. Yeah. I mean... Both people involved in that act. Yeah. <laughs> no, but you've never been to a fish show with somebody shitting in front of you on acid, right? right? <laughs> like, and that's all it takes. Yeah. But, you know, like you say psychedelic music, and I think psychedelic drugs. You know what? I was... I'm sorry, real quick. Like, I don't think... I think people who... I think the average person... Like worry, we love music. I think the average person doesn't go to a shitload of shows. So anybody who goes and sees money on music other than listening to it on yeah, maybe buying it on iTunes, you know. So so somebody who does go see Grateful Dead or Fish, that Mm -hmm. shit's amazing because any band is already like times two more amazing live. You know what I mean? When people say that, oh, you haven't seen them live on drugs. If you throw drugs in the mix, yeah, yeah. Oh man, Dead and Company this summer, Wrigley Field. It's going to be crazy. <laughs> like if you see a straight edge show on caffeine, right? Maybe, but no, like you'll get jittery and uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's why you drink why, matcha. Why, 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 do you think that, why do you think there's people jumping off, you know, the stage and shit? I can't take this right? espresso, ah! you know. Yeah. You I gave can't. me a triple shot, God damn it. <laughs> right, dude, uh, the Dunkachino. <laughs> um, I, uh, I, think, I think we should... Maybe wrap, wrap up. this up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, thanks for having me, guys. Sorry I couldn't course. stay longer. You know, oh, Alex, have me sir. back anytime. For, uh, dude, it's been Part fun. Sir. That yeah. I kind of like to do. It was kind of like an Iron Man sort of like marathon. Because typically what I do is, like, it'll kind of wind down a bit, and I'll be like, and we're going to take a break. Yeah. But I, I do it very awkwardly. I ask, like, you guys want to you want, you want to take a break? Um, but this time we just chugged through. We yeah. had a time constraint. I think we... We were efficient, yeah. Which is one of our core we values. We had crowd here. control with the popcorn oh, moocher. Yeah, you know, we got those cats out of here. God, we've 
I feel like I've grown today from sitting in this basement. Do you, you got 10 seconds. That ten, oh, God, uh, the, uh, thank you for listening <laughs> oh, to this wait episode. Wait a minute. Oh. That's an 88, not an 89. <laughs> 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 All right. So, so you got right. a minute. Yeah, so we're on Spotify. We're on iTunes. It's hear nothing, see nothing, say nothing. We have an email. It's hear nothing, see, see nothing, say nothing at gmail.com. None of the G's are in those first few words. Uh, Psychic Alex is a DJ. He's our friend. Phil, another one of our friends. Did, yeah. I, did I miss anything? No, I mean, if uh, if you like the show, please uh, like us on Facebook. Check, check, you know, download an episode. or And you can even, if you know anybody interesting you want us to interview or, ch- you know, uh, possibly any patches, right? Just yeah. uh, give us a direct message. If you think we're pathetic as well, please let mm-hmm. us know. Yeah. We want to we want to talk about that on the next yeah. episode. We agree with. You. <laughs> uh, so. Thank you and good night. Thanks, yeah. guys. Don't do that. <laughs>